So start wrapping up. Um, kids, do you want another kid? Is that something that's in the plan? Well, well, I'm not necessarily hell bent on having children. I um, you know, we have a lot of children already, and I play a part in their lives, and so right now that to me that's enough like um because again like i love love these kids i care about how they turn out i care about if they have good credit or not or if they know about how to use a credit card or stuff like that like and i just feel like in this very moment like speaking with you if i were to say yeah i'm ready to have a baby then i would be lying you know um and i've kind of gotten myself like when i fell in love with him and i realized like okay this is probably who i'm about to be with for the rest of my life um my mindset started to change and i was like i never really was like yeah i'm about to have two kids or i'm gonna have one kid and no more children and just like that i've always been of the opinion like if i have kids or whether i don't have kids like that decision would not be the de the determining factor in my life like so it never was something that was like so super super big mm -hmm. um so i i don't know and then in light of like just so many other factors that you just literally have to take into account when you're having a kid for the first time or in general i'm just it's not looking like that's something i like quote unquote like really really want to do but i'm not saying that it's something that I've like totally ruled out. Like Jocelyn has a lot of children. Kendra's an introvert. And she don't want no kids. No, it, it's not that. It's just I I feel as if it's very bad. It's very bad to have a kid just because you got ovaries and just somebody's producing semen, but you don't have the time. You don't have the. You just don't have what you need to be able to nurture that child, and then the child grows up fucked up excuse my language because you as the parent knew that you didn't have that in the moment but you just went ahead and did it because biology allowed yeah. like I don't want to be that person so it's like if I can hit my the mark that my my investment my finan financial advisor told me I, I needed to meet to be able to retire and I have to work another day in my life if I can do that before uh I guess my eggs drop or the childbearing <laughs> years pass, then I would be very interested in doing that because I would be able to have my child with me every almost every moment of the day. Mm -hmm. I'd be able to, you know, just be there and not miss anything. But I don't want to have to, I guess, balance that right now on top of everything else that we have going on. Because it's not just we have children, we have businesses, we have we have a lot of obligation between us already. And so I just don't feel like it'll be smart to add something like that right now. Now, maybe in, I'm 34, so maybe a little bit before I'm 40 or at 40 or something. But right now, I'm, I'm just. I just feel like I'm you get to 40, you ain't going to be on. Them your years are just right on now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you 50 with a 10-year-old, 60 with a 20-year-old. I told him that, you know, now this is going to happen so, so far in the future, but our children will have kids one day. I mean, it's going to be so long before that happens. But I've made peace with myself in that when they do have, have get married, have kids, I'm, I'm going to be right there. Because, you know, they're going to want to have fun. They're going to be feeling the way I'm feeling. Like, oh, my God, I still want to be, you know, out there. I'm going to be like, bring the baby, drop them off. Keep I keep them for two weeks, two months, whatever you want, and I just feel like I'm gonna have many opportunities to do that. It's like I'll I get I'll out. I'll I'll get my the the piece of of motherhood piece. or womanhood that 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 that'll get satisfied by that basically. And so I I mean, and we've had this conversation before, and he kind of like just agrees he don't like to hear me talk about I mean I don't feel comfortable even talking about our kids having kids um but it's just something that that naturally occurs so I know it'll happen and but I did tell Jocelyn if he if he wants to have a kid with me then we can we can do it like if if he can basically assure me of of a few things then I wouldn't necessarily be opposed to it it's just right. we are both and tell me, correct me if I'm wrong. I just feel like we both on the same page. If like not right now, <laughs> maybe. I mean, 
I can't see you having no kids. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to just be straight up. Like, I just, I don't see it. Well, it's not even a, you know, it's kind of interesting because early on, that bothered me a little bit. Early on, early on, early on. When I first met her, I was like, dang. But I grew to love her for who she is and how she feels about it. And I'm cool with that. All right, so where you're at now, everything that you know from, again, life experiences, um, just growing, what do you both want your legacies to be individually and then together? Um, individually, I want my legacy to be a strong one that lasts for at least a generation, but I'm aiming for about two generations of, of, of legacy. You know, I want to be able to leave enough money behind for <clears throat> my descendants to be able to have a meaningful place um, in in this country and contributing to, you know, the Robinson name, the Robinson legacy. Um, you know, I, I want people to look back and say, yeah, it was a lawyer and she was good and she was pretty and she, you know, she didn't take no mess from nobody and, you know, she helped, you know, human beings get ahead. She helped black people get ahead. You know, I I want that kind of, uh, I guess, aura around my legacy and then us together. You know, I want Jocelyn and I to be the couple that can go down in history for persevering you know, being together, laughing together, you know, having minimal trouble, but, you know, because trouble, trouble, just nobody is bigger than that. But, you know, I want our love to stand the test of time. I want it to be examples for for years and years to come, for centuries to come, you know, and I just want us to, to I, I want the Robinson name, you know, to be like, you know, the King family name, the Obama name, the, you know, I want it to, to just be able to be spoken throughout history and just, I want it to mean something, not just money, not just fame, not just a TV show, but like, I want it to be like a pillar on earth. So, you. Yeah. Um, you know, legacy, man. I ain't no timeline of it for me. I can't say a generation. I can't say a lot of that. I just want, I would, I would just like to know that, you know, when I expire, people will really know, like, that man got a good heart. No matter what, you know, he was able to forgive. No matter what, he always tried his best to be better or better his situation. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a lot of us that give up along the way. It's a lot of us that give out along the way. Oh, um, so for, as far as me, I just I want people to know, like, yo, man, that man could he he could light up a room without trying. Like, he could he could look at a bad situation that he could take. It's like he could just extract all the negative from the situation and show you what you got left and. Paint a pretty picture with what you got left. That's that's me. Um, nothing to do with money. Nothing to do with fame. Near yeah. that, cause what is that? Right. Pass it on. They don't give a shit no more. They just happy you left it. You appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, he was a good man. Right. Don't mean nothing. But um, for us together, um, you know, I I, I would like for our family, our kids. Kids, kids, to be able to look at our ups and downs, our trials and tribulations, and hopefully somewhere along the line, you know, you, you could create your own family guideline on how to live, how to prosper abundantly because, you know, it took a long time to get to this space and sometimes it takes even longer for people to truly appreciate what that space means. Because mm -hmm. people don't understand the, people don't understand how, how, how some forces, how they truly affect you. 
whether directly or indirectly, you know. Because when you think of the whole scheme of six degrees of separation, you'll never know who you're connected to. So I would love, hopefully, hopefully that it could prevail long enough, bright enough, strong enough for people to see it and know it when they're in the midst of that type of love. Because everybody got love. But it's what type of love? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Some people love other people and you don't even know it because they don't show it until you see it in the actions of a period of time, you're like, no, nah, they rock with each other. Cause I didn't even know they they went to school together. Man, I didn't even know they they went to college. I didn't even know they ended up making a million dollars together. Cause it wasn't about broadcasting it. Some people have to show their love, cause it's so compelling. When it's so strong, it's so bright, you can't dim it, you can't hide it. And I just hope that uh, that's how we transcend as far as the concept of us together as a legacy.